What is up guys and welcome back to another episode. We got another cheater video for you guys. This one goes a little deeper than just one cheater and actually results in the death of one of the cheaters slash witnesses. This is a pretty crazy video guys. You're gonna wanna stay tuned to this one. So this story kinda revolves around one angler, Danny Ray Davis. He was a bass fishing tournament champion. $50,000 winner. Now $50,000, that's a lot of money, but you, this was back in the 1980s, guys. This happened back in the 1980s. And uh, so think about how much money that would have been back then. Like that that's probably be like winning 150,000 in a tournament now. But yeah, this Danny Ray Davis guy, he, he kind of like had a rough life. He, had, he's, he was only 33 years old. He'd been through four divorces already. He was a burn victim. He got badly burned during an explosion while he was on the job as an electrician. So he wasn't considered the luckiest guy. But when he started fishing, he actually told people that he started fishing because he had extensive nerve damage from the explosion and from all the burns and that fishing helped him regain control of his hands. And that's how he started. And then he got into tournament fishing. Apparently, he wanted everyone to know that he was a winner. You'd see him every day wearing his silk jacket that said $50,000 winner. Apparently, it was one of the prizes for the tournament that he'd won. So he wasn't shy about flaunting the fact that he was a, you know, quote-unquote, bass fishing champion. So in the spring of 1984, old Danny Ray Davis was fishing a tournament. It was the KYKX Big Bass Classic. Pretty large tournament. The first place prize was $105,000. And again, now we're talking about the 1980s, guys. So that is like an insane amount of money to be paying out during the 80s for a fishing tournament. But he caught an 8.7 pound largemouth bass, which got him first place at that tournament. This would have been the second major tournament that he had won within a year. But something didn't seem right, guys. Something didn't seem right. The judges and the tournament directors thought something was up with some of the fish that were being caught during this tournament. Among those fish that they thought something was a little fishy about was the 8.7 pound bass that Danny Ray Davis had caught. Six different fishermen were disqualified from this tournament for failing polygraphs. Danny was one of the guys who failed the polygraphs and he blamed his nerves. He'd been failing polygraphs before at other events and he just always blamed his nerves and no one really looked at it up until this point and everyone just kind of gave him the benefit of the doubt another fisherman who had actually won the kykx big bass classic the year before confessed the cheating when he failed his polygraph during this one and that opened up like a whole can of worms guys this gary parkinson guy not only did he confess the cheating the year before he confessed to not even knowing how to fish he said he never even casted a line how incredible is this guys now again this is back in the 80s i'm sure uh it's probably a little bit easier to cheat back then than it is today. Although people still be doing it. People still be getting away with it. So after that, you know, he was he was ultimately arrested and the police were trying to figure out what was going on and they had set their sights on Davis. They wanted him to come to Tyler, Texas to testify. They suspected that Davis and this Parkinson guy were both part of a bass fishing cheating ring that stretched from Florida to Texas. And this was like a big deal, guys. The investigators were actually worried that some of these other, you know, cheaters were going to retaliate against the cheaters turned witnesses to the state so like they were like really concerned and they were like having to like like pretty much put them in like witness protection to make sure that they weren't gonna get hurt davis not wanting you know obviously not wanting to get in insane trouble decided he was gonna go to tyler texas to testify but he, he asked his dad to go with him according to his dad danny ray davis had told his father that if he testified he was a dead man so apparently he was afraid for his life guys danny ray's grand jury testimony was set for wednesday on August 29th, 1984. On Tuesday, the day before, the day before he was supposed to go testify against all these other cheaters in this illegal, hidden, bass fishing, cheating ring, he was found dead on the banks of a gravel pit lake near his family home with a shotgun blast right through his head. How insane is that, guys? This is definitely the most scandalous cheating incident that I have, I have I've come across so far and this was kind of buried I had to like really dig for this so this stuff was so buried that I can't even find like what they actually said the cause of Danny's death was the last thing that I read was that suicide and an accident wasn't ruled out but a lot of people think he was murdered and I don't know if this was ever solved because I literally cannot find anything on it if you guys know anything more about this comment below let me know I'm actually really interested to know how he was how, how or if he was uh you know, murdered. Okay, so I, I found a little more on, on his death, guys. I, I guess officially ended up being ruled a suicide, but it was like never really proven. And there's a lot of people who still believe that he was murdered, which doesn't, I mean, it's crazy. The man was fearing for his life and then he just winds up dead and it looks like a suicide. 
definitely definitely pretty sus right there definitely a little sketchy i mean actually definitely a lot sketchy apparently though these guys were running bass from florida to texas and this is before that they were stalking florida strain bass in texas they found this out because they actually like tested the dna of the bass they could do this even back in the 80s and they found out that the bass were coming from florida and that's how they figured this out here's where this gets even more wacky apparently what they thought they were doing is that they were just like bringing these bass from Florida and like starving them and then just releasing them in like a secret cove in the lake and then just going back there and catching them because the fish were so hungry. So like this is like the most insane form of cheating because they're actually catching the fish. Yeah, they're illegally stalking them there, but according to these articles, they weren't like in like a in like a barrel or anything like my last video, like the guy in my last video. They were actually just freely swimming, and the guys were able to catch them because they had starved them for so long that they were just hungry and just eating everything. They would just stock them, and they'd put them in the night before. Now, that seems unbelievable, but if a bass is hungry, it's pretty much going to hit anything. I don't know, guys. This is absolutely freaking insane. There was, like, another witness to this, uh, this, this bass fishing ring, and I can't find his name anywhere, guys. But he was fearing for his life too, so they actually put him in witness protection. He was one of the competitors that was disqualified as well. Apparently the other witness was telling investigators that he wasn't going to live till sundown if he actually helped them. If he actually helped the state bring down all these other cheaters. This makes me wonder if like the freaking mob was involved or something. Like this is insane, guys. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Comment below. Let me know what you think about this. This one was pretty wacky, it, and it's wild because this obviously is a true story, but it is really hard to get the fine details. It's like a lot of this stuff kind of gets like like brushed away or hidden. There's a lot of sketchy stuff going on. This was going on in the 80s. If, if these same people are active and still like cheating or running some kind of like cheater ring, who knows how sophisticated it has got. Some of the freaking big time pros to, that we know today could be involved in something like this. The more that I dig into this stuff, the more that my eyes are just open to all the craziness that is actually going on in competitive in, in competitive fishing. I can't freaking believe this stuff, guys. Holy crap. But yeah, guys, comment below. Let me know your thoughts. This one's this was a wild one, guys. Holy crap. That is all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please smash the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>